Hello everyone. My name is Saint Rose and you've probably seen pictures of me, statues of me, you've heard my name, Saint Rose of Viterbo people technically call me. Um, but you know I'm here today to show you who Saint Rose actually is. I'm here to show you that Saint Rose, that I am a living, breathing person just like you. And uh, you know, you hear my name associated with Viterbo and you read my name in the books or you read about Saint Francis or you read about Saint Clair and they just seem old and they seem boring. I know what you young people think. I do. I'm aware. In heaven, we, we hear it all the time. We talk about it. We're aware. You say the words hang out and you say not cool and lame. I'm aware of all of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm caught up on the lingo. Now, some people think saints are lame. Saints are old. Saints are boring. Saints don't have fun. False. That is false, my friends. And I'm going to tell you about my life, and then I'm going to tell you how my life applies to what you're learning and what you're doing here today. So I was born in the cold year of 1233 in a little town called Viterbo, Italy. Sounds familiar. I wonder why. And I lived in a very simple household, but I had a deep, deep longing for Christ, a deep love for the Lord. More than, more than a lot of people really realized, and, and I heard the Franciscan friars who were good friends of St. Francis traveling around teaching the words, teaching the life, teaching the beauty of St. Francis. And I was so inspired by that that I decided to jump on that bandwagon and go around and explain to everybody how much the Franciscans and how much everyone in the world should love Christ and not just love him from a distance, but love him right in our hearts and to love him in the streets with the poor, with the rich, with the sick, with the wealthy, with everyone. So I carried around this cross and, oh the irony, bear the cross, I did. I was about 14 years old and some of you are older than that, I'm assuming, uh, and uh, I was 14 when I went around and I decided to preach and to speak and to love the people in the city of Viterbo, Italy. I carried around this cross. I carried it around everywhere I went. And I talked to people. I just talked to people about the love that I had of Christ. And I wanted them to love Christ just as much as me. So I carried this cross around and I talked about the crucifixion and I talked about the suffering, but I talked about the love. And I just wanted people to feel the love of Christ that I felt, that the Franciscan friars taught me in Italy. So at that time, there was an emperor. And at that time, the emperor and the pope did not really get along. The emperor was kind of considered the head of the country before the pope was in the church. So the emperor was not a big fan, as you friends say, was not a big fan of me going around teaching the love of Christ, because that didn't go along with the emperor's ideals. So he banned me, he banned me from Viterbo and kicked me out for a while. Me and my family in the dead of winter, he sent me out. He exiled me from the country. And I said, okay, that's fine. So I went out and I brought my crucifix. I brought the cross with me and I taught everywhere I went. And I shared the love of Christ that I had with everyone I met. And then I predicted, I think that emperor is probably going to keel over soon, as some of you say. Keel over, die, pass away. And guess what? He did. So he passed away just as I predicted. He passed away and then I was allowed to come back. So I came back to Viterbo with my family. I was a young age. You know, and just a side note, some people get caught up on, was I born in 1233, 1234? When did I die? Was I 18? Was I 19? It doesn't matter, friends. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I was filled with the love of Christ. And that's why I became a saint. Because the Franciscan friars inspired me to teach people about holiness. Now holiness we think of, it's kind of lame, it's boring, it's old. 1233, that was so many years ago. There's no way that that applies to anything in my life right now. I know what you're thinking. You don't want to be here. This is a required event. I'm aware of that. 
But you know what's even more important than that? There's something called the universal call to holiness. And the universal call to holiness is a huge movement. It's a beautiful thing that we are all called to. It's called the universal call is because we are all called universally to be holy. And to be holy does not mean to be boring, to have no friends, to have no fun, to live in 1233. No, to be holy means to be the best version of yourself. So I was the best version of myself when I was on this earth. Because the best version of myself involved the love of Christ and involved showing people how much I loved Christ so they could love Christ. And then I became a saint. And not everyone is going to be like me. Not everyone is going to take around a cross and bear to the world how much they love Christ. But there's a sense of holiness that each one of us has. We're all called to. And I know you think you're not good enough. You think you're not strong enough. You think you're not holy enough. You think you're not smart enough. It doesn't matter. We're all called to be holy in our own individual ways. We're called to be the best versions of ourselves, whatever that means. Because God made us to be holy. He made us to be good. He made us to be enough. We are more than enough. We need to believe it. So you think, okay, well, St. Rose is a saint. Good for her. I'll look at her. I'll be aware of the beauty that she has. But that doesn't really mean much to me. False. False, my friends. False. So we're going to play a little game. Might feel a little, little weird. I don't really care. So we're going to say the word saint. Ready? On the count of three, let's all say the word saint. Ready? One, two, three. Saint. Good job. Nice enunciation. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, now we're going to say our names. So I'm going to say the name Rose because that's my name. You can say your name, your full name. Let's just say your first name and maybe where you're from. That sounds good. So I'm St. Rose of Viterbo, so you can be St. Dakota of uh, wherever you're from. So let us say the, our names first. Ready? One, two, three. Rose of Viterbo. Of, yeah, very good. Now, we're going to change it up. We're going to say the word saint in front of our names. Ready? So I'm going to say Saint Rose of a Turbo. Okay? And you say saint, whatever your name is, of wherever you're from. Ready? One, two, three. Saint, saint Rose of a Turbo. And that, you laugh. You're laughing. Is that funny? I know, I know. That's what's weird about it. It sounds weird to say your name with the word saint in front of it because it's weird. That's funny. You think of saints, you think they're old, you think they're boring. They're not. We just named a saint this year. Saint Pope John Paul II. And does anyone else know the other one? Saint John the Twenty Third. Saint Pope John the Twenty Third. It's possible to be a saint. It's not only possible, it's what we were made to do. We laugh because it sounds weird, it sounds foreign because we've never thought about it like that. You can all become saints. You can. It sounds impossible, but it's not. You become the best version of yourself. You open your hearts to the love of Christ and you will become a saint. You will be holy. We are all called to be holy, to be saints. It's not funny, it's possible. It's what we were made to do. So I was born in 1233. The Franciscan friars came and spoke to the people of my town. I was inspired by that. So then I walked around with a simple cross, simple dress, and I spoke to people about the love of Christ. And then some people were inspired by me. And then there began an order after that. And then after I passed away, that order grew. And then that order came to the United States. And then they settled in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And they named themselves the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. They started a school, that school turned into a college, that college turned into a university, and now you're here because of my love for Christ. That's all it was. That started with this. It started with this. And look at where you are now. It has nothing to do with being good enough. It has nothing to do with being smart enough. It's all about being the best version of yourself and being as holy as you possibly can be. And look at what can happen. So much beauty comes from opening up your hearts. And it's possible, and it's what we were meant to do. 
So when you think of saints, when you think of the Franciscan University, when you think of St. Rose, St. Clair, St. Francis, St. Pope John Paul, St. John the 23rd, don't think those holy high people. Think, I can be that. And not only can I be that, I can be that, but I can be my own. I can be my own saint. And who knows what's going to happen. It's possible. God bless you all.